Well, this table is heading to Hawaii, so we've already got our tickets. Thank you so much for the invitation. We'll be sending you the bill as well. And so, um, I tell you, this is a wonderful opportunity. So, as a return Peace Corps volunteer over 22 years ago, um, I joined that organization to, to make a difference. And I look for people who are trying to make a difference in government and around the world. I've had the opportunity to sit for the last few minutes with uh, a gentleman who is making not only a difference in the state, making a difference in his community, but making a difference in his family. And I am more than honored to be able to share with you why he is a recipient this evening. Everyone knows that the first days of a new job are hard. But Dan Lorman encountered something a little bit different when he took over as Michigan's Chief Information Security Officer eight years ago. The job wasn't just new to him, it had scarcely existed anywhere. If you asked a governor who his or her CISO was, you'd be very likely to get, at best, a baffled look. But Lorman saw looming threats to crucial state systems and told Governor John Engler that Michigan needed a point person in charge of information security. The governor agreed and asked Lorman to be that person. It's a job that involves facing down a steadily increasing number of network attacks and online criminals who get more sophisticated by the day. But Lorman has taken a proactive approach. He insists that security can't be an afterthought in information technology. It has to be built into projects from the very beginning. The approach is working. Simply by filtering the ads that Michigan's on Michigan's desktop computers, Lorman is saving Michigan $30 million in lost productivity and allowing people and systems to become more efficient. But Lorman knows that cybersecurity isn't just about saving money. It's about serving citizens and serving them better. Michigan enables residents to conduct 3 million credit card transactions with the state every year, doing everything from paying for a driver's license to making campground reservations. The state can do that because it knows that thanks to Dan Lorman, the personal data of its customers is secure. Today, when new information security officers take over in states, cities, and counties around the world, they will look to the example of the man we honor tonight as the public official of the year, the techie, also the author, who embodies the title of his book, Virtual Integrity. We have actual integrity with us, Mr. Dan Lorman, public official of the year. Thank you so much. Wow. Th thanks, Tony, for that kind introduction. And thank you, Governing Magazine, for making this a very special evening my family will never forget. I'm so honored to be on the stage with such outstanding and motivating public servants. Some of you are probably wondering, what does a chief information security officer actually do? Well, allow me to describe the historic events of the past week through the eyes of a CISO. I was watching the election results last uh, Wednesday morning about 2 a.m. when CBS News described a long list of winners and losers on election night. Their list contained many names, but bo one big winner jumped out at me, the Internet. CBS described record online fundraising by President-elect Obama, new social networks connecting millions of people with the daily buzz through blogs, YouTube videos, behind-the-scenes campaign pictures, and instant messages. Experts even proclaimed, were it not for the internet, Obama would not be our next president. But later that same day, we witnessed the dark side of the net. Newsweek magazine disclosed that both the Obama and McCain campaigns were victims of sophisticated cyber attacks by unknown foreign entities. The FBI and Secret Service told the Obama campaign, and I quote, you have been compromised and a large number of files have been offloaded from your system. Now, these are the words that CISOs like me never want to deliver to senior politicians. Um, our job is to enable the good the 21st century technology allows and disable the many bad things that can happen online. Our mission is to both protect sensitive information and ensure that citizens can trust digital government. Which brings me to our remarkable Michigan e-government story. I'm blessed to be a part of an amazing technology team in Michigan, led by my boss, Michigan CIO Ken Tice. With the essential support of Governor Jennifer Granholm, Michigan is a global leader in e-government. 
During difficult economic times, we have transformed the way Michigan government works by consolidating 38 data centers into six, which will soon be three, saving over $100 million in the process and stream streamlining processes and contracts, at the same time vastly increasing the number of government services delivered to citizens and businesses online. And yet, the bad guys keep getting better on the net. We constantly see viruses, hackers, scams, and more. Our networks are attacked thousands of times every day. Cybercrime is now the fastest growing criminal activity in the world. How has Michigan responded? We built new online defenses. From stopping malware to encrypting files, we've implemented over 30 cybersecurity projects, many with U.S. Department of Homeland Security grant dollars. But let me tell you a story, short story, about our most important security success factor, and that is our people. One day last year, email boxes started filling up with messages containing the subject heading, e-card from your daughter. This new spam was actually an ingenious method to bypass our state-of-the-art spam filters, which were already blocking over 90% of incoming email in the state government. Unfortunately, that attack worked. Almost 200 state employees clicked on the link, which secretly established unseen connections to overseas computers that tried to infect our PCs with viruses and steal personal information. But in this case, Batman came to the rescue. <laughs> our security experts, who work in a restricted area that we've nicknamed the Bat Cave, notified us of numerous unexpected connect connection attempts to Asia. Our team blocked the un unauthorized internet connections and prevented any loss of sensitive data. They notified those who clicked and got technicians to fix their PCs. I'm here tonight because I lead a great security team. Shifting to a more personal level, I've had a life filled with unique government opportunities, from starting my career at NSA in Washington in the 1980s, to working with NATO networks in Europe in the 90s, 21st century e-government in Michigan. I've been able to serve society and grow professionally at the same time. Along the way, I've had some very special mentors. People like Rose Wilson, who's here tonight, Michigan's Chief Deputy Director for DMB, who showed me the ropes and who hired me in 1997 when I came over from Europe. Innovators like Terry Takai, who's the CIO for Miss, uh, California, and uh, who won this award three years ago. Terry challenged me to find ways to say yes and offer customers secure ways to implement new technology. A bit further back, my family taught me about the most important things in life. I grew up not far from here in Baltimore as the youngest son of seven kids. My father was a pastor and my mother a social worker. We didn't have much money and I was often the fourth son to wear the same t-shirt. But my family members modeled faith, character, and perseverance, from fighting to win two on two basketball games with my brothers, to the encouraging words of my parents and sisters, to the daily support I now receive from my wife and kids. I owe an eternal debt of gratitude to my family. Most of all, I'm thankful to God, because nine years ago I was diagnosed with cancer. My dreams were instantly dashed, and I thought my career was over. Two years later, I became Michigan's first CISO, since then, my wife and I have adopted my son Paul from South Korea and my daughter Lydia from China. My first book was just published, and now I stand before you as a healthy man because of God's grace. If there was hope for me then, there is certainly hope for each of us now. And I'm almost done. In conclusion, <laughs> cyberspace offers the promise of new exciting opportunities and harsh new realities that threaten each of our integrity. I will do my utmost to represent our industry well, well in both real life and inside pioneering new virtual worlds that are transforming everything about government and society. Thank you again, Governing Magazine. Appreciate it.